you know, the places you see blue is in the sky and the ocean, and you can never really touch uh, the sky or the, the horizon of the ocean. So blue is the color of that which cannot be touched. And yet with blue porcelain, you can hold it in your hands. Hello, Michael. Hi, Hi Petra. How are you? I'm finding you. Very well, thank you. Very well. Nice to see you. It's lovely to meet you here on Zoom. And um, uh, where are you at the moment? I'm at my home in Cape Town. Oh, okay. Yeah. Beautiful Cape Town. Yeah. Is it is it winter already in Cape Town? It's definitely getting cooler. Um, you can see I've moved my um, uh, workstation station in front of the fireplace so I can work by the fire. Oh, wonderful. Well, I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you because I absolutely love what you're doing. The, your ceramics is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I would love to know, did you start already at a young age being interested or what was the interest in, in ceramics for you? Um, I think it's just something that's always come into my life, like in cycles. Um, one of my earliest memories is, um, you know, I grew up on the wild coast of South Africa, which is quite rural, and there's lots of clay that we would um, dig from the riverbanks and then make things with. But it was never fire. But that's definitely, I think, where the love for playing with earth began. And then I've always just kind of worked with pottery in one way or another from a young age. Um, and then it was only, I think, when I was studying at um, the University of Cape Town, I did some extra evening classes in pottery. And that is where it all began, really. Um, I learned about it. I fell in love with it. And people started ordering. And then the moment there was like this commercial uh, interest, obviously, there was no stopping it then. But now you you didn't study um, art. No, oh, no, oh, I didn't. Okay. Okay. I studied art, art history, which is a history course, uh, mm. but no practical. I'm an outsider artist, I think they call it. Oh, okay. Now, but because you, you said then uh, in the evenings you went to do some pottery, and I just think to myself, uh, you must have been very interested in doing pottery then, if you do that, um, uh, you know, on the side. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I, I think that was it, but I'm also very social. And these evening pottery classes are always filled with these wonderful housewives. And I just love women. So it was kind of this place to come together and <laughs> it was like yeah. therapy in a way. We would talk about everyone's problems and have a glass of wine with our pottery. And by the end, I think um, it was just like a soul few hours where you came out feeling better than when you arrived and sometimes you had something to show for it yeah now i think um i think working with your hands with this creativity also is is some sort of you know the sharing and the the being together and it's in a way it's it's, well, you know, a therapy. Um, it's therapy yeah well if you think about it human beings have been spending time with other human beings, playing with earth or preparing food for as long as we've been able to speak. So I think it's tapping into something incredibly um, primal, really, uh, yeah. that connects us to each other. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. One of my interests is going to the mountains of um, the Cape and we look for rock art some friends and I, and we record it onto the cloud for future generations for research and to save it effectively. And um, we often find little bits of pottery in the caves too. Really? And it's something that, yeah, it's something that we leave them there, don't worry, we don't take them with us. Um, pottery is just something that has always been around civilization effectively. If you, the first writing in the world was on dried mud, which is a kind of clay, I guess. So, yeah, I think culture, civilization, and clay is very much um, intertwined. I wonder if we, without us knowing that we are drawn to it, you know, because we are, we are also drawn to to beautiful porcelain, you know, and and uh, 
we are drawn to to buying you know cutlery that we eat from so i wonder if it's just instinctively in us to to have that or to to want that well i do think there's an impulse and i noticed it especially with um women and with gay men is the 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 absolute reverence for a jug it is such a simple shape but it's just so beautifully formed that when you just see it or hold it um it's almost like holding uh, i don't want to say a child but holding something alive it has a a, a spell that um you know we fall for every time so i do think there's something about the beautiful ceramic form that just takes your breath away and you can't really explain why it's like falling yeah. in love. Um, but at the same time, then, you know, you can get more elaborate bits of um, pottery with incredible decoration in colors and finishes that, you know, delight the eye. Um, for one, I have a theory that we love blue porcelain so much because you don't really get blue in nature. You know, the places you see blue is in the sky and the ocean. And you can never really touch uh, the sky or the, the horizon of the ocean. So blue is the color of that which cannot be touched. And yet with blue porcelain, you can hold it in your hands. Wow. You, you really, you really uh, have <laughs> caught on there. That's true. I haven't thought about that. And, and yeah, because I've, I think I, I scrolled through Instagram and I immediately, this, this caught my eye, your, your blue porcelain, because you do a lot of blue. I, I do. Um, I, I think it's very important to love the process as much as the final object. And I love to paint with the color blue. And I love what happens at the end of the day when it comes out of the kiln. So just in the Instagram feed, someone once said to me that when the human eye sees blue and white, it, it activates the same part of the brain as when it sees gold. Really? Um, so I'm not quite sure if that's true or not, but yeah. um, I'm going to go with that. I'm very <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so now you you did these classes uh, in in the uh, in the evening when you were studying, and you said that you suddenly started getting orders to make things. How? Um, because uh, uh, with with pottery, you have to have the kiln to to bake, and so it's not a it's not a something you do on the side at home. How did you start your your studio? Well, to be honest with you, um, you can do it on the side if you can oh, find okay. someone else to do the, the dirty work. Oh, so okay. I must come clean while we did, like in the beginning stages. I'm not so much a potter as a surface designer, a surfacist. So yes, I do make my own things now, but I really enjoy the decoration part of it. Okay. And a lot of my work I buy as blanks like you would buy paper in a, in a or blank canvas and oh, then we okay. paint it. Mm. Um, that said, I am in the process of doing a little renovation in a building, which I'll have a studio and a wheel and a kiln. So I'll be able to call myself a, a potter <laughs> properly. <Yeah, okay. laughs> I also just really enjoy that slow time when you're making mm. pots. And the idea that if you keep arriving, 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 you get better and you can improve. And so in time you do become a successful potter. It's one of those things that you get better at the more you, you arrive, you know, at your studio. So yeah, yeah right now what I do is I get them um, fired and glazed at a small factory in here in Cape Town. I mean, I think that's the wonderful thing about pottery is it can be so many things. It can be about making the form without decoration it can be the decoration it can be the practical application it can be many things my big interest i think that's use decoration to tell a story that can tell a story for as long as it's intact now michael can you show me some of your your work there because i see you've got some on the table I've got a few pieces. so um 
I've, as I said, like I've, I've actually got a lot of commission work in the past few days, and it's winter, mm-hmm. and where I normally paint a bit cold, and it's my dressing room, so it's also become like a when I dump all the stuff, it's a mess. So uh, I don't it- feel like it. I don't. I think it helps to work in a messy environment. Yeah. So yeah. I've moved it into my my living room, and um, I think we can get a little idea of you can't, that's my courtyard. Oh, but wow. if you look down here, you'll see I've got my brushes in um, a little Toby jug. Yeah, but it's actually made in Japan, so I think that's quite cool, like an English pot made in Japan. Yes. I'm a big fan of Japanese ceramics. And then if oh, we really? come back, here, oh, um, you can see my ginger jars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then I want, as you can see, we're like a really beautiful plate. Anyway, beautiful. this is my altar, my like little yeah. altar for my home. But yeah, on the table now, I've did this bad boy. Oh, I hope this person's not watching because it'll ruin the surprise. So okay. this is for a couple who have a farm in oh. the free state. Oh, so that's you, beautiful. Yeah. It's kind of got all her favorite flowers and the mountains and her children, her three daughters. Can you see that? Yes. <gasps> yeah. So that's just like a friend's birthday present. Yeah. Um, six. I don't know. But anyway, so that's what oh, I've been to. Beautiful. People just love them. Um, they're yeah. very popular for wedding presents or people buy a new home. Mm-hmm. And I'll paint the house with the name and the date made. So any but, idea I, I can put into into action. But but there you have this. You have a little story there on that plate. I mean, you have the, exactly. the children, and you have this. So do you find out more about the people when you start painting? Yeah. So someone will place an inquiry, and um, after they've made the payment, we begin a conversation and we mm-hmm. talk, and it's a bit like you talking to me now. Yeah. And I said, okay, what do you want to see on this plate? And then you give me all your ideas. So it could be wow. the farm, your children, your favorite flowers, dates, all of that. And then I do a sketch, mm-hmm. um, which looks something not like that. Um, here we go. Sorry. So again, I hope no one's seen this. So it's just like uh, a little sketch. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you say, Michael, that looks great, but can you change this? And, oh, I totally forgot. We need that. And once you sign off, I start painting, yeah, uh, with my brushes. And uh, then it goes off to be fired um, at that little factory I was telling you about. Wow. So it's yeah. really interesting. I get complete insight into people's lives. Mm-hmm. Some of them really um, sad, um, people who's sons died when they were children and they want to make a plate to remember their mm. son who passed away or I had a very special one where um a mother wanted a platter for her son who's struggling with leukemia or cancer mm. right now mm. and then you get real access into real people's private lives mm. um and I just think it's an incredible uh it's an incredible privilege to be able to be that little something that can show love or make life a bit better for people going through a hard time. I think that's incredibly special. Not everyone gets to do that in their day-to-day yeah. job. Um, but then I'm also part of very happy things. Like we get an engaged, don't tell her we're going to use this platter. And, you know, oh, so yeah, yeah. Many, you see all walks of life mm. um, when you're doing these kind of commission things, which... I think it's very special. Well, you also have to um, have this. You also have to have a sort of this intuition um, uh, to to uh, put that in a, a painting or in a drawing. I mean, you you have to feel it as well to be able to uh, to do it. You know, to um, give this picture. I mean, I have done some pieces that um, you'll never see on Instagram because. They're really bad. Um, but mm-hmm. on the whole, like, you're right, you have to feel it. And, um, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing because the commissions are all about expectations. So the client is coming to you and they want all of this on one small piece of play. Yeah. And then you've got to do that. So you always try and maybe under-promise but over-deliver so that they get a they get more than they think they're getting. Um but it all depends. Some clients say, Michael, can you just paint my dogs? 
I literally have a client paint my pet bird. Oh, okay. I mean, is there a name? Is there a bird in a cage or what kind of, you know, like, whereas if another client's like, Michael, this is what I want, go. It's much easier if I've got lots to, to pull from and to work with. Um, yeah. Does yeah. It, does it um, I want to show you. Uh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, does it, you, hmm. does it restrict you in a way if if you have to always do commissions or do people give you a little bit of freedom to to just be creative in, in how you see it? That's a very good question. And I'm glad you raised it. So whoever's listening to this, when you approach an artist, there's only a reason you approach them because you like what they do. As much as possible, give them creative freedom because they want to do something that they're proud of and that they love. They're not going to create something terrible. And so I find some of my favorite commissions are the clients that say, Michael, knock yourself out. All I want to see is my house and my name and the dates. The rest, just make it fabulous. And then I'm going to make it really fabulous because I'm free. You know, I'm not looking at my sketch all the time so um yeah it is an interesting challenge a uh, commission work is obviously you provide a service to someone yeah um but there's also a lot of freedom that is lovely to be able to apply in the process mm -hmm. um even just for me from a creative point of view because i want yeah. to enjoy it as you said it has to be enjoyable yeah but you want to show something else yeah so i was saying um that's kind of the commission work. What I have started doing this year is making um, some pieces for myself, which I don't oh, okay. often get the chance to. Mm -hmm. Mike. So this one I posted recently, and I'm just so in love with this piece, I can't tell you. It's not off, maybe it's not often like you make something that you're and you go, wow, this is great. So I'm going to show you it and I'm going to tell you the story. This plate I made in a mold and the mold yeah. I made myself using a very old piece of porcelain because mm -hmm. a lot of my work is historical. I think it's quite interesting to take a historical piece of porcelain that's mm -hmm. two, three, four hundred years old and then make a mold with it. So when you're making new pieces in 2022, the mm -hmm. shape is actually an exact negative positive of the old examples yeah um anyway and so this is a little piece out of porcelain it depicts um a chinese junk ship in table bay can you yeah. see that oh beautiful <gasps> this Thank looks you. like a historical piece i mean it, <laughs> it looks like an antique piece well, it, it, it comes from something that I, I started looking into a few years ago. There was a, a fleet of Chinese sailors who were sent to travel the world um, in about the 1400s, way before Van Ribbick came to the Cape. And um, they weren't interested in taking over the world. They wanted to show off how technologically superior they were by leaving silks and ceramics and carved jade throughout their travels. In fact, you can find bits of blue and white pottery in the ruins of Great Zimbabwe. And no one talks about this connection between Africa and China and India. That whole Indian Ocean was just a petri dish of culture. You know, we always focus on what the Europeans were doing. And I think we've really looked at that in quite a, a big way, which is important. But let's also talk about what was happening on the other side of Africa. And so I came up with this concept called Afrosheen, which is a word I invented, um, which is like part African, part Chinese. Um, yeah, so the Chinese made their way, from what we can tell, down to Mozambique before their foreign policy changed. And they went back. They took a giraffe with them on the ship. Um, you can what? see it really? um, on the deck. Yeah. Mm, can you see it there? Yeah. Amazing. So, how, did you, how, did you figure, have, how did you know that? <laughs> or how did Wikipedia. you discover that? Wikipedia. Oh, okay. Wikipedia. Um, there's also a famous book, I think, called 1415 or something, 
uh, mm -hmm. which looks at the story. Um, there are people in Namibia who claim to be direct descendants. In fact, the, the theory goes that the Chinese made it to Portugal and left maps, and that's how the Portuguese later found their way to the East. So, wow. you know, who mm -hmm. knows? Wow. I love a bit of whimsy. I like to ask um, questions. I'm super um, dreamy and creative. Mm -hmm. So I had a show called Afrosheen, What If They Never Turned Back? And the hypothesis, the, the question I was asking rather, was if they came to Cape Town and found proteas and they found leopards and they found elephants and all the wonderful things that we had here yeah, um, before mm. they were hunted to extinction, <clears throat> mm. would they have taken those back and created beautiful blue and white porcelain vases and instead of the peonies and the chrysanthemums and the bamboo, mm. would they had um, fainbos, they had ericas, they had Proteas. And so I started making these collections of blue and white um, ceramics that um, kind of had that. And so it's grown. Like he has another little uh, guy. Oh, beautiful. In Table Bay. <gasps> so this is quite interesting because yes. if you look here, so I just found this on auction. Yeah. This is um, a, a, a Chinese style plate. Oh, yeah. And you can see it's got the birds and the Chinese. Yeah. So I've kind of taken that motif in a way. Yeah. So you can, you know, I've kind of like played with it. You know, yeah. I've played with it. Mm -hmm. So oh, it, this is yeah, fascinating. Yeah, well, this is the thing about pottery is you can tell these stories. And when the pottery breaks and you throw it into the rubbish bin or in the old days, you'd throw it into the, the where you grew your grapes for the vine, for the, the mm. wine. You can still find porcelain today. We as children on the beach found uh, bits of shipwrecked porcelain that were traveling from uh, the, the east to the west because this was considered white gold. It was so valuable. Mm. Um, and as children, we used to collect the little bits of porcelain that came in from the shipwrecks. So. I've got this absolute um, obsession with blue and white and the ocean and how all these bits of blue and white came over the ocean. Some didn't make it. All the blue and white you see in Europe had to sail past Cape Town at some point as cargo because it would have been too fragile to carry by camel on the silk route, essentially. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff to play with there, which... Mm -hmm. um, and I you, really get off on. You've encapsulated we'll it now in 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 these um, uh, artworks that you do on the plates, you know, on the pool, on on the on the clay. That is amazing. That makes it so unique, really. So only. Well, I just yeah, I just feel like no one is really taking the blue and white to the next step. So yeah. blue and white. It's cobalt oxide, which is actually used a lot now in um, uh, batteries and cell phones. It's a very in-demand element. So I'm not sure if my um, pigments are going to get more expensive. But um, it kind of began in Persia. It was an Islamic um, Arabic um, form. And from there, it went to the East, China and Japan and Korea. And it went uh, to Spain and Italy um, with the, you know, the Moors who traveled. And then mm -hmm. from there, it went to Holland. So Holland, everyone knows Delft ceramics. Everyone knows um, the Afrikaans, the yeah. port blow, mm -hmm. the bluest blue, port blow, mm -hmm. probably because that blue was in the pots that you found in early Afrikaans Dutch homes. That's my theory. So now we've kind of got to a point of like, okay, well now what is the next, what is the next thing of blue and white? What is the next? And instead of just copying what came before, let's add our own historical imprint on. So in 400 years time, when people are looking back at my work, or it, it tells a story of where we are now and what we were looking at, what captivated us and held our attention. So yeah, that's, um, that really excites me. Yeah, I, I really think this is amazing. And how do you, or do you take now of, if you're now saying that 
that you're trying to capture the time period as well. But do you do you use what is available now or the visuals that 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 we see well, now? Do you use that as you well? Know, I'm quite a um, like classic traditional guy. I'm not going to start painting cell phones. No, and, no, no, no. Uh, that's not what I mean. But I mean electric like, cars. No, no. But I think in terms of where we are, um, you know, there's a big conversation about colonialism and obviously blue and white country is part of that. Um, my kind of thing I want to speak about, you know, there was that happening, but there were other forms of people trading and using the ocean that had ceramics on board that didn't have this colonial agenda. Let's like talk about that conversation. Let's oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. take our focus away from Europe and decentralize it a bit and go, hey, like what happened in the Indian Ocean? Uh, what what um, marks did they use to decorate things? Um, I just find there's so much that we not brought up on because it's considered out of the central focus that is beautiful and does deserve our attention. Um, yeah, so that's one way we can do it. Um, I do have a little idea. I don't know. Do you, you're on WhatsApp, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when people turn their little blue ticks off. Yeah. That really irritates me. me especially too. when you're trying to date. It <laughs> irritates me. Like, you know what I'm doing, but I can't know what you're doing. Yeah. I but know. It's shady. I don't like it. Yeah. So I want to do a beautiful traditional shape um, vase with all the blue ticks that oh, you didn't give me. <laughs> I want so to see that. The way I'm bringing, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the way I'm bringing um, a bit of contemporary yeah. uh, living, dating technology onto porcelain in a way that might still feel quite yeah. traditional. I want so, to yeah. see that. I love it. I would <laughs> yeah. love that, really. <laughs> I'll get going and let you know. I'm, I'm totally, yeah, I, it, it also annoys me. But listen now, you what you're talking about now is also something that I think about a lot and, and that I talk about a lot uh, to artists. And this is the fact that in schools that we have subjects like science and maths, and yet art is always a side subject. But you have now also proven here that with art, you have taken history you've taken the sciences because of the, of, of the the the, um, the pigments that you use and so pottery is actually also you know a combination of many things it's a combination of math science history and art you know and I, i'm i'm sure there's more things that that can well, be added so when I was in high school, I wanted to be a botanist because I love the plant world. Mm -hmm. And um, my, I found out what the starting salary was. <laughs> I thought, okay. not happening, not happening. I like <laughs> things, pretty things. And uh, my father said, we just do it as a, as a hobby, son. So I thought, okay, mm -hmm. that makes sense. And it's funny because I actually consult with botanists now when I'm doing some of my big mural work. Really? Of going... Yeah, so I'm, I am tapping into botany um, through the blue and white. And as you say, which I haven't worked out, history, chemistry, um, yeah. even like business, like economics, like this yeah. costs 10 rand and I can sell it for 100 rand. Mm -hmm. How do you market it? How do you sell it? In fact, you could probably do a whole school course where each student has to make like something out of pottery and they have to sell it and it has to have a historical thing and they learn about yeah. temperature. Yeah, Can that's you imagine? A, that's a good idea. Yeah. Can I you think imagine? you're on something. You, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you have to approach schools and, and talk about this because I think really, I think we are underestimating the value of art in education. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know what? The thing about art is it's so limitless it can be whatever you want it to be and i think there is a wonderful power in using kind of uh, like art as the ocean on which all these little boats of history and maths can connect and meet and you can learn about yeah um there i don't know if there are that many other subjects that allow you to do that 
that's the power of art. Art is whatever you exactly. want it to be. Really. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Uh, Michael, tell me, what are your wishes for the future? Wishes for the future. Um, I want to slow down. I've been working really hard. Obviously, we've been going through some strange times. And I've just said yes to every commission I can. And, you know, it's I work at my, I've got a store in a gallery and work with other artists. Um, we have a show opening tonight, actually. And that's 10 to 5. Then I come home, um, feed my dog, and I start painting ceramics, which is lovely. But I would like to focus more on my work. I'd also like to do more of my work. So there's yeah. no Mr. and Mrs. Smith and their house. But I'd like to tell my stories. Um, I, I love doing the commissions. I'll never stop that. But I've got things. I want to say, hey, guys, did you know the Chinese came to Africa? Did you know that you can find bits of blue and white pottery in the ruins of Great Zimbabwe? That's so cool. Um, what other cross-pollination things are waiting to to happen um so a lot of that a lot of that a lot of that i uh, wouldn't mind i'm um, tapping into doing some really special interior projects because um this house i renovated last year and it's just given me so much joy mm -hmm. um and then murals i don't know if you know about my ceramic murals um the big kind of azulejo uh, ones no. that i do Mm. Um, I've got one in my courtyard, but I, I can't move this machine, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. and, um, I'll send you some pictures. Um, okay. yeah. I do these big um, in tiles, like you get them in Portugal. And those I just love so much. Um, so yeah, just to keep painting blue on tiles and ceramics and like cover the whole thing. Yeah. It's, how <laughs> that's what I want to do. And, yeah. So is it so you 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 do more like this? Um so it's plates and and the tiles and so on. And do you do like sets as well, like uh where you know, like cutlery where you can eat from or and, and tea sets and yeah. so on? All my serenity you can eat off. Uh, yeah. you can put them in the dishwasher. I wouldn't. Really? Yeah. Um yeah. Yeah, you can. Wow. I do because, yeah. Anyway, I, um, <laughs> I would maybe because my stuff has become quite expensive. So it's not yeah. for everyone. You know, like yeah. one place is lovely as an artwork, essentially. Yeah. But maybe to have a whole dinner service is going to be um, quite another story. But I'm here for it. I'm here for it. If someone yeah, out there can wants you imagine to, the conversation? Like, can you imagine the conversation around the table when you have all these plates that you've painted? Well, can I tell you what I did for a client in lockdown? It saved my bacon. She inherited some blue and white from her mum, and she thought it would be very beautiful up their staircase if she commissioned. I think she commissioned 40 or 60 plates and side plates, different sizes. And each one I painted with a memory. So the wow. one was like a wedding egg mm -hmm. in India. The other one was a mm -hmm. Disney World in Paris. <clears throat> um, scuba diving, Vic Falls, uh, tiger fishing on the Zambezi. You name it, where they got married, where they met university, their children, their children's interests and passions. And um, so this entire dinner, well, dinner service, um, all these ceramics tell their story in different ways. They hung them up. But as you say, imagine being able to eat off them. Yeah. And this is what I do want to do. I want to create my own dinner service for my mm. loved ones because I love cooking and I love feeding people and then when you come to my home you eat my food on my ceramics <gasps> on my so the whole experience is just entirely handmade mm. and from the heart that's, yeah that's a big part. amazing yeah you have to I'll, come and visit. Yeah. I'll come. I'll come and visit definitely I want to come and see your work it's so beautiful really and um but now, um, so you you have a, a gallery and and a shop. Where can where can yeah. your work be seen and bought? Um, so I think our Instagram is the best, which is mm -hmm. Chandler House CT. Um, so the shop 
it's called Chandler House. And then we have a little gallery called the Furkana Gallery, which is an Afrikaans word for that front room in your home where you welcome your more distinguished guests and you have your better pieces of art and furniture. So we play on that idea that once a month, the Furkana has a little exhibition. And they're small and they're intimate and they're whimsical. Um, for example, we opened with a show all about Cape bulbs, botanical paintings. And we painted the gallery a darker color from the mid down. And then we're going to hang the work so the root is below the darker level. It's a bit of fun. You know? oh, okay. So it looks like the soil line. You know? um, so yeah, we've got that. We also have a website, chandlerhouse.co.za. But it's still not where I really wanted it to be. So I haven't really, if we, when I have a bit more time, I really want to spend some time polishing that and making it beautiful. Okay. But I'll put the link anywhere. I'll put the link in the description, the way people can find you That's or how they can communicate with you. That would be great. Thank you. Michael, I've got one more question for you. Can you do a shout out? for your favorite restaurant coffee shop in the area? So this is a little shout out. My favorite cafe in Cape Town or restaurant is the Blue Cafe, not uh, just because of the name, but mm -hmm. it's a small family run cafe and they support local. They, they just are magic. If you know it, you know it. If you don't know it, you need to know it. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, try their Bolognese, very good. Oh, really? Okay. And where are they located? They're located in Tamboerskloof, which mm -hmm. is this lovely neighborhood, and it looks onto Lion's Head, and it's just the world needs more cafes like that. It's very special. Mm -hmm. But wonderful that they um, that you gave your shout-out to them because I think it's these small places and that they are conscious of what they're doing and, and uh, you know, yeah. I think they those places should really be mentioned. No, thank you for that. They're actually going through a bit of a um, problem at the moment with two neighbours who are trying to close them down, mm -hmm. even though they've been in operation for over 100 years. So um, these are people that knew the cafe was there when they moved in and... Mm -hmm. They're just such an important part. A lot of people have um, met their now partners there. Um, they sell its, um, beanies for winter. You can take them there and they'll sell them for you. Really? Um, they really, yeah, they really create this little watering hole that neighborhoods need to thrive and help each other. Um, our lives are becoming so insular and it's yeah. more important now than ever to have these communal spaces where you can meet your neighbor. Um, yeah, they're just very special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you there. So, Michael, have a lovely afternoon. And it was so lovely to talk to you, really. But you're so creative. I mean, it's just everything that you do. You're just one um, creative human being. <laughs> I'll come to visit you when I come to Cape Town. Please do. I'd love that. Yeah. I'd love okay. that. I'll cook for you on, on a place. <laughs> oh, I would love that. <laughs> okay, Michael. Thanks so much, Petra. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.